talk to people. So I, I think I told you that my um, I, t- I teach leadership and I work with clients mostly in religious circles. And mm-hmm. so here they are watching the show, a number of them feeling like they need to make sure that everybody knows there might be some blue language in there. And they are all re- um, recommending it. Oh, Even, wow. like Watching it with their children, watching it with their teenagers. Why? Because they see this character who has character. And part of what you have behind it is this humility and curiosity. Almost everybody I know quotes that phrase about curiosity. Um, when you guys were making those decisions, it sounds like they were very intentional. Like you were actually trying to create a character who had a formation background. Um, what was that like to think about that in, in this day and age? Uh, it was, you know, I think all writers on stuff, especially things that they've become incredibly passionate about they personalize it you put parts of yourself in it and so I think what was so interesting was as a writing staff having to force ourselves into that very mindset that you're speaking about at a time that not everybody was feeling that way uh the positives of it you know you never know how a tv show is going to be received or how it was going to do uh even if this show didn't do well, uh, uh, it was very therapeutic for everybody to be writing friendships that weren't toxic and uh, um, characters that believed in forgiveness and people that were optimistic, even in the face of reason, you know, overwhelming reasons to not be so. Uh, um, I will say it's hard to switch because I, I, I want to make sure you have to understand too, if you haven't talked to a lot of comedy writers, I would never disparage the world of comedy writing that I grew up in and still live in sometime, which is firing snark and, and fun. You know, there's the show called beep um, mm-hmm. that uh, if you ask me to describe it, like to my son, I was like, every character is more repulsive than the other. And they just are finding new ways to be horrible to each other. And I would watch it until the end of time. Exactly. It's like, for, as a comedy writer, it's like music to me. Um, for me, the, but it was really interesting to have to police ourselves you know, once kind of Jason, you know, really set the course of who this character was to say things like, you know, uh, you can't, if somebody wrongs somebody else, you're not going to be able to stretch that out for four episodes the way you used to on other shows. Cause once it becomes aware with you know, we deal with forgiveness on this show and, and how it might really happen. Um, same thing with, you know, uh, uh, how important it was on this show to hire uh, really strong female writers that could put a female friendship front and center in a show like this and uh, um, not have those characters be ciphers, meaning being the girlfriend or, you know, or the girl that's pursued, which is, you know, uh, admittedly something that happens sometimes in a, a show created by, uh, you know, a bunch of old dudes, you know, uh, and so... I think being outside everybody's comfort zone is what made it fun, Todd, you know? Part of what was so exciting about it was that, um, you know, Ted's value that everybody is cynical about is that he cares more about developing people than winning. Like when he says that, you can almost feel the snark developing within us. And yet throughout the show, the characters develop. You watch them get mature. You watch them deal with loss. You watch them deal with, um, you know, the confrontations, even the scenes of their past. was there a desire to intentionally see these characters also develop? I mean, it's not just that Ted's not just the only person in the room who's everybody else is trying to become a a better person because of his, his influence and presence. Yeah. You know, the tricky thing is, and I think it's one of the fun things about, look, I I love television as a medium. I've been doing it for a long time. Um, This new world of streaming shows where you can tell a long story that you hope, you know, people get into the minutia and, um, uh, beyond the main story is we took the time at the beginning to say, let's take all of our characters and no matter how small, let's say what their journey is from beginning to uh, end. But when I say beginning to end, it, I don't mean this season, we got obsessive and, and, and did it for, you know, what we think their journey is, which can change depending on, you know, what's received well and what we like, but what their journey is for the whole series. And that's not just Ted as Rebecca, it's even the character Nate, even the even the character Sam, the young player, they all have journeys that you'll see. I hope that people will realize as they watch them, even in the second and third season, that the seeds were planted in the first year. And um, I think what's really interesting, you know, if you're a TV fan like me, Todd, is that when you started the network TV, like in Spin City, back when I did that, 
uh, it was such a pleasure to work with Michael J. Fox. I loved just multi-camera sitcoms. The job was to entertain people every week, but the characters never change. Do you know what I mean? And that's what network television used to be about is comfort food. It, people knew that they could hang out with a group of friends that made them smile and gave them pleasure on a week to week basis, but no one was really traveling a journey as a character. Um, and uh, it's evolved now in some shows like this, where if people remain stagnant for too long, I think people lose interest, you know? And uh, um, so really kind of mapping out, you know, everybody's journey was part of the fun. And I knew it was going to be challenging on this show because Jason, to his credit, the way Hollywood works is a business still. If they, you had asked them before we made the show, they would say, oh, this show should start with Jason Sudeikis as Ted Lasso bouncing around and being his funny self. And it was very important to Jason to start with Hannah Waddingham's character, Rebecca, a long scene with a female lead that establishes what her journey is going to be for the whole show. And, uh, you know, there's some pushback on that and stuff. But, yes, yeah, so we charted all these things out as to where these people would end up um, and uh, uh, kind of what the complications and pathos was. And there was so much so that some of the major ones, which will be both you know, positive and negative, haven't even sprung up yet and will spring up in the second year. Well, we just have so much to look forward to. Yeah.